Exploitation, this time on Metasploit Minute. This Metasploit Minute is brought to you by Hack5 and viewers like you. Support us directly at hakshop.com. Welcome to Metasploit Minute, the breakdown on breaking in. I'm your host, Rob Fuller, but you can call me Mubix. As you may recall, last time we were this close to exploiting a system. We did enumeration and discovery of our targets on our virtual corporation, the evil empire. Today we're continuing the attack with the exploitation of the Java RMI service. So last time, if you recall, we searched for Java RMI and we got back a few things. Um, we have the scanner, we have the exploitation, and we have this other browser exploit. So the first thing we're going to do is use this scanner to see if we can exploit the service. So use Let's paste. Oh, uh, let's see if, no, that won't work. So show options, set our, our host to 10, 73, 31, 151. That's our target. Run it. Ooh, class loader enabled. Yay. Like I didn't know it already, but you know, for your edification, it, it's there. <laughs> so we do our exploit because we are ready. Use. So options that are our host 1073.31.151. Set our URI path. Real quick, um, it is very important to know how exploits work before you run them. Um, info will help you with this. Uh, and uh, one of the things that it says in this information is that the URI path in the options is because what's happening is Java RMI, when you tell it to load a class, it has to go get that class from somewhere. So the only way this, this exploit works is if that machine can actually get out to your machine or, or wherever you're hosting this from um, and the URI path that it wants to get it from. So it's actually making an HTTP request. So that serve port is very important. Because if, if you specify 8080 and that host on the DMZ isn't allowed to get out on 8080, then you're not going to get anything. So let's put it, put it as 80. And let's set our URI path slash. And then we specify a payload. So before we do that, we can see that the exploit target is Java payload. We show targets, show optional targets. And we can specify all these different targets. But we're pretty sure since it's metasploitable that it's Linux. So let's just go with a Java payload. So we set, um, set payload to, um, since it's already, the target is already defaulted to zero, we can actually tab and shows us what payloads are available for that specific target type. I wouldn't recommend doing that on Windows because there's so many payload options. So Java interpreter reverse, let's go with TCP for now. See if it works. If it doesn't, and we specify a bad port or something, we're, we're going to just have to work with that. So our L host, oops, set L host, set our L port. I wish you guys were in front of me so I could ask you what you thought what a good um, L port is, but we're going to go with 1099. Let's. We're going to assume that since we can talk on 1099, it might be allowed in and out. Don't know. We're going to see how that works out. It's a good assumption. Um, and if we specified serve port as 8080, we might want to just do maybe 80 as the L port. You make assumptions based on the, the, the defaults that most enterprises go with. So we're going to go with 1099 and see how it works. We hit exploit. And our interpreter session one is opened. Yay, we win. Oh, that's funny. Our session says it's opened. And then after it, it says it might be exploitable. Good job, Manusploit. I think, I think it's actually exploitable. So we're here. We're inside the session. So get UID is one of the things that we do first, just to find out who we are. We can actually background this session and show that we are on a Java interpreter inside of Metasploitable. So we sessions back into the search session. This is where I take a step back, because most of the time when you get your first shell, no matter if you've been doing pen testing and red teaming for 40 years 
or, or it's your first time, if it's your first shell on an organization, usually that, that rush starts and you rarely stop to think, okay, what do I have? And what I call that is presence. So presence is looking around the host and finding what you already have instead of trying to get off the host or, or persistence first. You really want to just take a breath. You have, the, you have access to the host and even root even. So look around the host and, and get everything you can first. Now, this is sometimes trumped by persistence when you're doing a fishing exercise or something like that where the their chance of um, of you losing that shell is great, but since this is a remotely exploitable web or, or, or internet facing um, uh, code execution, I think that we're safe for now and we have a chance to look around. Remember always the rule is two is one, one is none on shells, so always have an extra shell. This time we're not going to, we're just going to go in and look around. So PS gives us a process list, LS, get, oops, why didn't LS work? That's weird, because we're in root, no. I don't know why LS isn't working, but it should. So these are all of the possible commands, just question mark, just like we did with MSF console that you can run. Now the core commands are always loaded. Standard API is another extension that gets loaded by default, but it's not, it doesn't have to be there. And then uh, for that, I think that's all that gets loaded with Java Interpreter. So we can type shell, and that should give us a root shell. There we go. We can do an ls there, and we're good to go for that. And we start looking around. So let's, let's look at var dub dub dub. So there's the tiki wiki. There's um, tk wiki. There's all of the cool stuff there um, that we saw on the host. So we know that's an that's a, um, exploitable web app. Now. We're going to table presence for a little bit because you can go on and on about how to look about different things on a system. Um, and we're going to come back to that and have a whole segment on presence. Um, but what we're doing here is we're going to set it up so that next week we're going to focus on pers uh, pivoting and moving around the network. As you can see, if we do an if config, we're actually on another network that we didn't know about before. So we're definitely in a DMZ of some kind. Next week, we'll be pivoting around the DMZ, so stay tuned. Until then, let me know what you think. Hit me up at msf at hack5.org or stay tuned to metasploitminute.com for more shows like these. And thank you again for supporting the show. If you want to support us even more, go to hakshop.com and enter coupon code MUBIX for some free Metasploit Minute stickers. Until then, I am MUBIX and I'll be hacking till the cows come home.